seated as the great and illustrious Stephanie Waterhouse comes to bring the word this morning. Good morning. There we go. I was excited that they gave me a mic like this today because that means I can talk with my hands. And anyone who knows me knows that I talk with my hands. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself up and moving. You're fine. Weren't they? A oh, the Holy Spirit's thick. Thick this morning. Thank you for taking us into the throne room. Awesome. All right. So it's a total honor to be here, and I'm so honored that um, Alpha asked me to bring the word to you this morning because it is a complete honor. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Stephanie. Um, my husband and I are the children's pastors here at Revolution Church. Um, we've been pastoring for the kids for about 10 years, um, but we've been at the church almost the whole time, not quite. Um, my husband and I have been married 16 amazing years. Um, I have eight beautiful children and from 10 to 18, and our family is truly um, one that only God could have orchestrated and put together. Um, when Alpha asked me to speak, he asked me if I would speak on faith and family, which are two very, very things dear to my heart. Um, so I took a couple of days, prayed on it, and the Lord showed me and took me to Abraham and Isaac. And so we're going to go there this morning. So if you would go ahead and turn in your word to Genesis 22, verse 1. And I'm going to go ahead and pray for us this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now, Father, for the opportunity to get into your word today, Lord. I pray, Father, for the hearts that are here, Lord, that you would just prepare them for the seeds that are about to be planted. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me, Lord, and you would just touch each and every one exactly where they need to be met today. Father God, we pray for those that couldn't be here today, that you would meet them where they are, whether that's sick or they're needing to just stay home to, for protection. Lord, that you would just meet them right now through the video, through the camera, Lord, and you would just touch their hearts in their homes. Lord God, we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. So in Genesis 22, it says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am. He replied, then God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up, saddled his donkey. He took with him two servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the frame, there we go. I'm not sure. We'll bring it up here then. Um, when he cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went out to gather, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went out together. 
When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar. On top of the wood, then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy. He said, do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram. Caught by its horns, he went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. What an incredible scene. First, I want to take a look at Abraham. And I want us to back up a little bit. Because Abraham was a man that God, he was so proud of. But if you look back in Genesis 17, God made a covenant and he changed his name actually from Abram to Abraham, which means the father of many. It even goes as far as to tell us that from both Abraham and Sarah would come kings. So if you look back, our savior, our king of kings comes from the line of Abraham. I mean, that, that to me was so good. And he was also promised that he would have a son at 100 years old. Now, I don't know about you, but Abraham laughed, and I probably would have too, because that's funny to me. But if we move forward into Genesis 21, we'll see that Isaac was born as promised to Abraham and Sarah, and its name actually means he laughs which is so amazing. <laughs> now, what Abraham didn't know, thank you, is that Isaac would be a part of the greatest test of faith. And this test was not so much to produce faith as it was a test to reveal faith. And God built Abraham slowly, piece by piece, year by year, into the man he was, God was calling him to be. And that was when he took, asked him to take his son and go. So here we have Abraham, and God's telling him to take his son and go to the mountain and offer him as a burnt offering. So I don't know about you, but that would be a very big test of faith. Because as a parent, and he went, he went. The son that he had waited for, he was promised his only son, and now he's being asked to take him to the mountain and to give him back to the Lord. So it was a miracle that he, without hesitation, incredible faith, stepped out and he went to the mountain. In fact, when Abraham said, here I am, it would meant that he was ready to be taught he was ready to obey, he was ready to surrender, and he was ready to be examined by God. So he gets up early, and he packed the donkey, and off they went. And even though he didn't understand, he did it. Complete obedience. And Abraham and Isaac traveled for three days. He, they went up, and Abraham, without wavering, they get to the mountain, and as God directs them, and he tells his servants to wait there. And he tells them to wait with the donkey, because he's going to go up to the mountain with his son, and what he says is he's going to worship. 
Now, in this context, it doesn't mean that he was going up to worship and sing praises. In this context, it actually means he was going to bow down. So he's heading up. And I'm wondering how many of us at the base of our mountain will go up to worship. Take with you what you've been asked and go to worship. Because something, sometimes when it's being asked of us to offer our one and only son, it's truly that step of faith. So they go. There that Abraham obeys God and puts his son on the altar that was built. And he's ready to offer her back to the Lord. And when an angel stops him, he directs him to the ram caught in some bushes and tells him to offer the ram instead. So Abraham had to learn the difference between trusting the promise and trusting the promiser. And we can put God's promise before God and feel it is our responsibility to bring the promise to pass, even if we have to disobey God. But we have to trust the promiser that no matter what, and the promise is going to be taken care of. So I want to make sure you caught that. We have to learn to trust the promiser, not the promise. And so how do we do that? We make sure we're in our word daily because the Lord's going to speak and he is going to give so clearly and he's going to tell you the things that you need to do to continue to follow him. So verse 14, Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said that on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. To this day, it will be provided. So over the last 10 years, I'm going to give you some little bit of story here. Jamie and I have been called to do many things. Um, I believe it was when God asked us to begin the journey of foster care that he was asking us to go to the mountain. And I can say, hands down, it was the hardest thing the Lord has ever asked our family to do. We were asked to put our family on the altar. But we packed up and we headed into the calling of foster parenting. And one of the things that you have to do when you're a foster parent is complete this ginormous list of ways to keep your house safe and these ridiculous first aid kits, okay? So here we are in a December of all months and the Lord is telling, we're like, I'm not sure where all this money is coming from to you know, fulfill this. I think it was two page long list of things we needed to do. So we prayed on it and said, Lord, we're gonna just step out. And he was clear to us to take our rent and go buy everything we needed. And so we prayed on that and it was very clear, very clear. So we did, we took our rent. Now I'm not saying you all should take your rent and go buy, go buy things. But in this case, we, we knew that's what we were supposed to do. And so we went and we bought everything we needed, everything. And we just continued to trust the Lord and that he would provide because that's what he told us to do, to go up the mountain, put our finances on the altar, and he would provide the ram. And so fast forward to Christmas Eve, we didn't tell anyone, anyone we had done this. And we were sitting at a Christmas Eve thing and someone handed us an envelope. And inside that envelope was a check for the exact amount of our rent. Now, anyone who tells you <laughs> that being a foster parent or an adoptive parent is easy is not being honest with themselves. Because anytime you take five different families and you put them under one roof, 
you are going to run into stuff every time. But it's on that mountain that we continue to see the Lord provide. And I can say this mountain is a big one, but that he's, we are going to continue to climb it and continually lay what he has for us on the altar because Jamie and I truly have faith and we worship because of his faithfulness. And it's been more than we could have even imagined. And every single time, the ram has been provided. Every time. Our steps were ordered before we were even born. And God has divine plans for each and every one of us. Maybe you don't know what your plan is or what you're being called to. But maybe, like Abraham, you're going to be asked to take your most prized possession. But God met him on the mountain, and what he needed to complete his yes, he was provided. So another instance I wanted to share with you was Jamie and I have over the years had to lay our finances. He's been out of work. We have had to lay our health. We have health things that go on in our home. And 10 years ago, Alpha and Trey both called me and said, hey, would you like to take on the children's ministry? Even if for six months. Here we are, 10 years later, and I'm, I would still say yes today. It's been so good. But I had never done anything like this before. I had never, never done anything like this. But I said yes, because I knew that's what God was calling, calling me to do. And ministry is hard, and ministry is messy. It is not easy. But Kids Church was going great. It has been going so strong. We have an amazing team. We are moving along. We've been doing camps, VBSs. And then last March... My family and I decided to go on vacation, and when we returned, COVID hit. And the children's ministry as we knew it ceased. And I would be lying if I told you that I wasn't devastated. Because children's ministry to me is, is just, it's that, that precious. And it, it's more than a job. It's truly taking the next generation and getting them ready for their calling. But in that moment, I struggled because God was telling me to stop. He stopped me dead in my tracks. And he told me to take my children's ministry and take it up the mountain. Because he was going to ask me to lay it on the altar. Because he was going to provide what I needed for the next season. And children's ministry as we knew it was done that day. But he gave me something better. And I believe when we come back, it's going to look totally different. Because it can't look the same. We can't look the same. We have to be ready for what he's calling us for. It takes an incredible amount of faith to take that first step up the mountain. But you have to remember who's walking with you. You're not going alone. And that first step is going to be the hardest. I guarantee it. But if you, we need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And that's hard sometimes with the, every, the noise. But what I like to picture, and when I was writing this, the Lord gave me this vision of Father as he cups his children's face. And he says, look at me. Don't look left, don't look right, but look at me and keep your eyes fixed right here. Because if you keep your eyes fixed right here, you're going to be able to walk that mountain. So I, I believe it's not coincidence that you're here in the year 2020. It's a tough year, <laughs> to say the least, it's been a tough year. But we're here. And our children are here. 
And the Lord has created you and placed you here for today. And he's preparing you for the calling to get ready to go up the mountain. He's setting his stage as we speak for his return. And we're a part of that. Every single one of us are a part of that. And it's time for us to say yes and go up the mountain and take to the altar what it is he's asking us to lay down. And he's asking us to have great faith. But he's asking that faith is only the size of a mustard seed. It's not this giant faith. It's this big. He's asking us to have great faith in this point in history because it's going to take people with great faith to do the things he's going to ask us to do and that he's asking his church to do. So my calling during this season isn't going to look like your calling because we're not all called to the same place. The Lord's calling you to your individual place based on the gifts that he's giving you. So we're not going to all go up the same mountain. But it's time to step out towards the altar. And when you do step out to the altar, he's going to step on the scene. And he's going to tell you to pick that up because I'm here with your, with your sacrifice. So my current mountain, because <laughs> I don't have enough, <laughs> is I have had the absolute pleasure of walking with multiple families in our body during their distance learning. And I know that a, most people wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole. But I am so honored to be in their lives, to be with these children on the daily basis. But the thing that the Lord asked me to put on the altar, and you're going to laugh, is my sleep. Because anyone who knows me knows I love my sleep. My friends tease me about it all the time. I am a late sleeper. I've trained my children to all sleep late. And in fact, I've even trained my dogs. My dogs sleep late. So that, when the Lord said, I need you to go walk alongside these families, he, he wasn't kidding that it was going to take my sleep because I'm literally from 4.45 <laughs> till 9 o'clock at night. I'm, I'm going. I pick up kids in my way. I, I'm helping with their distance learning. I'm walking with parents who have decided to homeschool their children, and it has been hands down the greatest thing I've ever done. I love it. But... When my sleep hit the altar, the Lord gave me that ram, and I get sleep, but it looks different. So he's given me my sleep, just differently. We're all called to a different place, and a different mountain, and God is looking for you to say yes. And he wants to take your yes and go with you. So I ask you, where is your yes waiting to take you? What is he calling you to do today? What is he asking you to take the first step and head up? We got to have faith. We got to lay it down. He has exactly what you need to finish the race, and he's asking you to do it and, not, and to do it well. He's not looking for your leftovers. He's looking for your best. He doesn't want a yes, but only after I sleep all day. He doesn't want your excuses. He's looking for you to take that first step and take, go do what he's called you to do. So what's he asking you to lay down? Is it your husband? 
your child, your finances, because he's ready to provide what you need. If God himself can lay his son on the altar for you, can't we take that first step? His son was the ram in the bushes while we laid on that altar. And he put that ram in our place. That was the calling that Jesus had on his life. And the call that he has on your life isn't supposed to be easy. Because if it was easy, then you wouldn't look to him. So there will always be an element of hard. And that's so that we can't fulfill our our call with our own power. It requires us to continually rely on God to fulfill it. So again, I ask you, what is God calling you to do? It's time to say yes, to pick it up and go up the mountain to worship. And he's going to provide. So I want to pray with you today. And I really felt the Lord really wanted us to do this today. And I want to first call on the kids for a minute. Guys, God's called you, even at your age. You have a plan for your life. And he is already preparing you for that plan. By putting the people around you to put into you, to train you up and get you ready for when you are ready to fulfill his calling. So I actually want to ask, we're going we're gonna to ask for movement today. Because when we move up the mountain, we move with a step. So if you're a, I want to do kids and youth. If you're a child or kid or youth that are ready to say yes, because you know the Lord's been talking to you, and you want to step up into that place of faith, and you want the Lord to work with you and get you ready for that call to take that step, I'm going to ask you to actually stand up and come up here with me. If you are ready to say yes to the calling that God has on your life. So now I'm going to tell you that it's you guys. Because I know the Lord's talking in this time and for this time. He's preparing you in your life even now. And he's speaking to you as you're sitting here. Confirming what you already knew. There's not a calling that's too big or too small. It's going to be just right for you. So God's asking you to fix your eyes on him. Look into his face. So if you're ready to make that step today, I want you to go ahead and stand to your feet. And I'm going to ask you to move into the aisle. Thank you, Jesus. Even those around them, stretch your arms out because we're going to pray over them right now. Father God, I just praise you, your name, Father. 
Thank you, God, for what you're doing in this building right now, Father, and the hearts that you are speaking to. God, I just pray right now that as they have made that first step to go up the mountain, Lord, that you, Lord, would just direct every step. You would guide them. You would just build them up. Help them keep their eyes on you. That any distraction that would try to come, Lord, that you would just remove that from them. That the enemy would have no foothold. And that they would go to the mountain, Lord, where they would meet you. And they would worship. They would trust you. They would lay it on the altar, Lord, and you would provide the ram. And their calling will be fulfilled for you. Lord God, I pray right now, Lord, that they would trust the promiser. That you will never fail us, Lord God. So Lord, every single person that's standing, Lord, that made that move, Lord God, I just pray for a mighty move of you in them right now. That you would just prepare them for such a time as this, Lord God. And anyone that's at the home that's watching, Lord, that you would also, and they're saying, yes, I'm standing, I'm making the first step, Lord, that you would give them all the tools and all the things they need to walk up the mountain, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for our young people in this body. Lord God, that you would just begin to move in their hearts in a mighty way, Lord. And that as you begin to move and give them the, the calling they have on your life, their lives, Lord, that you would just give them peace. Continue to guide them and surround them with people, Lord, that speak into their lives. That the older people parents and other people standing that you would surround them with people that will speak into their lives that they will never feel alone in this journey is there anyone here today that doesn't know the Lord that says yes I, would, I want Jesus today Lord God, we just thank you for this time together. Lord God, we just thank you for this opportunity to hear your word and come into your presence. Now, as we go today, Lord, I just pray, Father, that you will continue to meet every need. You will bless their homes, surround them with your protection, and bring them closer to you daily. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. In your mighty name of Jesus, amen. If you need additional prayer, I will be here for a little bit. I know we have other elders that would love to pray with you. But I, I just want to tell you, I'm so proud of you. Because you will not regret a single moment of this. So I pray you have a good day. Thank you for coming and